get it on be agent out here we're going to do the in-depth review of this Dell Latitude 5411 a 14 inch premium business laptop now this is one of those laptops that you see very commonly around a lot of businesses because this is one of those workhorses there and you'll see another one which is the Dell Latitude 5410 now the difference between the 5410 and 5411 is purely just the processor there so the 5410 it uses more of a mobile processor there and for the 5411 it uses a more unlocked processor which actually uses more power therefore more performance there and that's the the only difference between those two there they share the same chassis same keyboard same ports everything the exact same it's just the processor is the difference between those two there so you might see actually a little bit better battery life uh, again you might see a little bit less performance from the 5410 i will be going through the temperatures and noise of this computer as well as the internals so be sure to stick around for that now i'm going to quickly go through what this computer can be configured with first so for processor wise it is using the 10th generation intel core so you can either get an i5 which runs four cores or an i7 which runs six cores now as for ram wise this is a major change for the 5411 compared to the 5401 it has now moved from a maximum capacity of 64 gigs of RAM, which is great. Before it was only 32, so this is one of the major changes of it. As for storage wise, you can get up to one terabyte of SSD, which runs an M.2 format. You can also house in a two and a half inch hard drive, but you do need to get a smaller battery for that. And you'll see that when I run through the internals there. As for graphics wise, of course, it's got the integrated Intel graphics, but you can option in for an NVIDIA GeForce MX250 chip in there. So that's kind of nice. You can actually get a discrete graphics in there if you want. So for display wise, there are two options. The first option is the HD option, and that is rated to 220 nits of brightness. And then there is the full HD option as well. Now with full HD options, there are three flavors there. So there, of course, there is the touch version and there's a non-touch version which actually are rated to 220 nits of brightness as well and the new one which they brought in which is called the super low power one and that's rated to 300 nits and suppose that can actually last a lot longer in battery life so i haven't seen that i would like to see that in the future hopefully i'll maybe uh, get one later in the future to actually do a review of that display there i will be creating a separate video to have a more in-depth look of the full HD non-touch display there and I'll put a link in the description below so when that is available so you can check that one out so I'll be doing the color calibration as well as testing for PMW and also I'll be looking at its screen brightness as well let's have a look at the ports starting on the right hand side of the computer we've got the micro SD card reader underneath that is the USIM for SIM cards and then we've got the oil combo jack here and then two USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports the one on the right is a power share port and then we've got the HDMI port now this is 2.0 and then we've got the RJ45 port which is great to see and that's on a lever system there and then we've got the wedge lock slot and then moving along to the left hand side of the computer here we've got the AC barrels and then we've got a Thunderbolt port there and this is a four lane bandwidth wise as well you can charge the computer using this Thunderbolt port as well and then we have another USB 3.1 Gen 1 port there and then that's the exhaust vent there and that's all there is to it as for the keyboard and trackpad it's still the same as the Latitude 5401 or the 5400 it hasn't really changed there it still has this nice tactile feel to it and it's built rough as i've never actually had a keyboard problem on these ones here so i've actually never done a warranty job for these keyboards so they're really great in that sort of sense there so plenty of keyboard travel there nice little tactile feel to it you just can't fault them they're quite rugged as well as for the actual trackpad there um, it's got a nice size there enough for it and it's actually quite comfortable uh, when you're actually typing for the palm rest as well too so you don't really have that much of a pain there and of course you've got the two physical buttons on the bottom there so in case you don't really like to do the touch there anyway so you at least got those two buttons to help you out for clicking wise if you've got the fingerprint reader opt-in it is actually part of the PAL button as well which is absolutely great in one place there there is a 720p webcam built into the display there. There is an IR version as well. Now with the webcam there, there is a privacy shutter built into it. And it's a nice little flick of a switch like this. And you will actually see a shutter that goes over it. And it actually be a red 
and shutter. So you actually, even if it accidentally turned on, you know there's something physically there blocking it, which is great, so no one's gonna spy on you. There are two speakers located on the bottom of the computer there, and when I tested out the loudness of the speakers there, it managed to peak at 89.8 decibels so that's pretty loud there so you won't have a problem when you're doing presentations on site there now as for sound quality i can't really say it's going to be amazing and i can't say it's awful neither so it pretty much sits pretty average is all i can say they have tried to improve a little bit but it's still i wouldn't say it's amazing and it doesn't crack at the top there and at the bottom there's the base is pretty average there as well too i couldn't say it's got amazing that it is a business laptop after all as for the build quality of this computer, now this one actually has the new silver finish which they have actually introduced for the Latitude 5411 and 5410. So this is the new finish there and it's all polar carbon all the way through there. I've had these running around and they last, they're very, very durable uh, computers here. So they're very simple, boring looking ones, but they're very durable so you can't really fault them at all. So the weight of the Dell Latitude 5411 with just the silver finish you're looking at 1.59 kilos and I'll add in the power adapter on top of that becomes 1.96 kilos. The 5411 comes with a 90 watt power adapter. That's a charge, the more powerful processor there. If you've got the 5410, then it more than likely will be a 65 watt power adapter. Now, if you opt in for the discrete graphics, then they'll probably upgrade you to the 90 watt power adapter to actually charge that 5410 with the discrete graphics there. Now they do support express charge so you can actually charge the battery from 0 to 80% in one hour's time. They also have some new optimizer there which you can actually change the power it actually charge up and when it charges up in different times so you can actually schedule that as well. That's in the Opti Dell optimizer which is new that they've added into there which is actually great. As for the battery life of the 5411 I did test it out in the four modes there. For the performance mode, I put the computer on stress. I put the processor on 100% load there and it managed to pull one hour and 10 minutes. And as for the better performance mode, it managed to get an hour and 30 minutes. As for the better battery mode, I dropped the load to 50% and it managed to get six hours there. As for the battery saving mode, I did drop the brightness of the screen from 50% to 25% and it expected 15 hours there. As for docking port wise or docking station wise, I do recommend the Dell WD-19 TB, TB standing for Thunderbolt. And if you've got a non-Thunderbolt USB-C version of the 5411 or 5410, then the WD-19 is all you need, the non-Thunderbolt version. Now I know this question is gonna be asked, if you've got the Thunderbolt enabled version of the computer, and can it work with the WD-19 non-Thunderbolt version of this dock? Yes, you can. It's just that you're limiting some of the display options there. It's just purely a bandwidth problem. So maybe your third screen can't go 4K, and that's pretty much better. You just got to check your resolution table from Dell's website in the documentations there. So when I tested out the temperatures and noise of this computer here, I found out what, where the hottest areas are of this computer here. So when the computer is doing not very much, all the way up to about 50% workload there, you're looking at most of the hottest area is actually near the center of the keyboard, which is not surprising because that's where the processor sits under. And as the, you do more work and the computer is getting more stressed out, then the actual heat then the hottest area then becomes near where the exhaust vents are, which is not surprising, that's quite logical. And therefore, the, where the cap key is, shift and control key is actually where it becomes the hottest area there. So, but it's not that crazy hot there. So, first off, my ambient temperature when I did the measurements was 19 degrees Celsius. We are in winter here in Australia, it's not cold by any other country's standards, it's just cold by my standards, that's about it. Uh, so when the computer was on idle, it measured at 21 degrees Celsius. And when I had the computer on load at 15% load, so that's probably where you do about your average use, um, productivity work, surfing the web, streaming. So when I measured the center of the keyboard, you're looking at 23.5 degrees Celsius and the noise of the fan was reading around about 32 decibels. And when I put the computer on 50% load, 
you're looking at the center of the keyboard around about 33 degrees Celsius. And for noise level, you're looking at 34 decibels. And when to have the computer at 100% load, so it's just stressing it out, you're looking at center of the keyboard, looking at 40 degrees Celsius at 38 decibels for the noise. And where the vent is, it then becomes 45 degrees Celsius. So that's it is hot, but not crazy hot there. Let's have a look at the internals of the 5411. So the first thing we need to do is undo the eight screws on the back cover there. And they're pretty easy. They are Phillips head, so you should be able to find a screwdriver pretty accessible there. And after that, you just got to pry this open. So I just borrowing my daughter's play doh scalp, and it's actually a very useful tool. And pretty much the easy way to do it is go through the hinge and then just slowly work your way around. And then the hinge work way on the rear. Again, on this other side here, hinge and slowly work your way around. And I've pre undone this one just to speed things up. And that's the internals here. So first off, we can see is there is a 68 watt hour battery in here. That's a four cell one here, and it is held in by one screw. And I do advise people, if you're going to do upgrades or working on the internal computers, always do disconnect the battery there. So that's just this little plug here. And just give it a nice little pull. It comes off, and that way the battery is disconnected there. So I've already pre-undone this screw here. So I'm going to lift the battery up. And then we can see, so on the left hand here, we have the SSD hard drive here, which is the M.2 format. So it is held in by two screws, and right up next to it is a header for a SATA hard drive. Now you can fit a two and a half inch SATA hard drive in here, but the condition is you need to get a free cell battery of it, so which is a 51 watt hour battery there, just because it's physically that much smaller, so you can actually give real estate to the hard drive there anyway. So I'm just going to pop this battery back in here, and that's all really all there is for that section there. And the next section that we need to take note of is the two sodium slots for the RAM, which you can upgrade. There is the Wi-Fi card here. There's a WAN card there. If this one doesn't have it opted in. I uh, forgot to mention on the right underneath this is where the smart card reader here is, is normally is located. If you've got that option in as well. I did perform the benchmarks for the 5411, so I'll put them up on the screen for you to have a look at. So here is the pass mark, Citibench R15 and R20, PC Mark 10, 3D Mark, and Spec View Pref as well. So with the Dell Latitude 5411 and 5410, they are simple looking computers there, but they're so durable and so serviceable. They're actually fantastic to computers to work with and they just get the job done. That's why a lot of com companies actually have these computers here. So if you find this video informative or enjoyed it, give it a like. And if you haven't done it already, subscribe to my channel, hit that subscribe button on the bottom the screen. I do try to upload a new video every week. And just remember guys, imperfections in life makes it beautiful and interesting. I'll see you next video.